What's the deal, family? Welcome back to Rare TV, the Real Action channel on YouTube. It's your boy Rare So, and today we got another banger for y'all. So, look. Top 10 horrifying facts you didn't know about samurai, man. Top 10 facts you didn't. Horrifying facts you didn't know about samurai. Last time, um, I did the top 10 horrifying facts you didn't know about Maori warriors. So, now we got samurai. I'm going to guess Japanese samurai, obviously. Duh. But just samurai. I don't really got no history or I don't really know much about samurai at all. Uh, besides what they show you in movies, you know what I'm saying? But that's not really like educational or nothing like that. Like that. So we're just going to see what they're talking about. Man, I like the other last 10 videos. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it, let's just do another one and see what they uh, see what they got on here. So let's get it. Hopefully y'all like it and enjoy it. If you guys just hit the like button, man, I'll keep doing more of these. If there's other videos like this that are like top tens about anything, leave it in the comments and I'll go ahead and uh, check it out. I might react to it. So yeah, man, that's it. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. Let's get straight to it, man. Video today, we're looking at the top ten horrifying facts you didn't know about samurai. What I ain't know, man, tell me. Number 10, they tested swords by cutting people in half. In a nutshell, testing a sword Whoa. involved testing the sharpness and quality Whoa. of- <laughs> You can't just cut some wood, like a tree? I mean, I guess not, because if you're going to use the sword, you're going to use the sword for the ops. The sword will be used for the ops. So you you using the sword to catch a body. Like, you have a samurai, you ain't pulling out the sword to go chop wood and shit. Like, you using that sword to catch a body. So I guess the best way to test it is to use a body. My question is, did they already use deceased people? Or did they use, like, like, like people who were, like, in jail or, like, captured? You know what I'm saying? Like, did they use, like, alive people? <laughs> or did they use, like, dead people that allowed themselves to be cut in half with samurai swords guess we're gonna find out of a blade on a straw mat something you've no doubt seen replicated by innumerable overweight guys wearing fedoras on youtube sometimes though when the client purchasing the sword was particularly wealthy or of high enough social standing the sword would be tested on a live often screaming condemned criminal okay, depending criminal. on the severity of the crime the committed could lose a limb or be cut completely in half That's crazy. number nine samurai randomly murdered people for fun during the tumultuous sengoku period of japanese history there was an informal practice among samurai known as chushugiri which roughly translates to crossroads killing Invariably undertaken by samurai who'd recently purchased a new weapon or mastered a new technique for turning someone's bowels inside out, the practice involved walking around at night testing the new weapon or technique on the first person they found. Bro. In the rare event that a samurai was caught cutting down an innocent civilian, they could always claim they were invoking their right to. Number eight, they murdered. That one, okay, look. A lot of shit don't really like it's not it's not like oh my god they did man like it's old like it's way back in the day like people were fucked up and shit we didn't have like principles and morals as much as we do now when it comes to like people i guess or whatever and shit i don't know but anyways bruh they like you get your new you get your new sam you get your new sammy you know what i'm saying you got your new sammy you like man my shit sharp cuz like my shit sharp nigga like I got the new Sammy, bruh. You just and then you just can't just put it in in the cut and just leave it there. You gotta go. You got the random dude trying to get a, a sandwich, and you just slicing niggas up in the woods at night. Like what you doing, bro? For no reason. For no reason. That's crazy to me. That's wild. That's way different, bro. Just cause you could. That that's like getting a gun, just like. Man, I'm about to just hit the block, nigga. Mass murder types. Like, what the fuck? That's crazy to me. All right, let's keep working. Did people they thought insulted them? Kiri Suit Goman was a basic right afforded to samurai that That's allowed them to life. immediately kill anyone of a lower class, including other samurai, if they felt insulted, with a punishing sword-assisted backhand. The only conditions were that one, they had to do so immediately after the perceived insult occurred, and two, they had to be a witness. 
Luckily, a samurai could use his own servant as a witness, meaning it was possible for a samurai to basically kill anyone he felt like without reprieve, just because society said they were important enough to get away with it. Number 7. Common women had to pay to marry them Marriage in the age of samurai was an unusual thing because what exactly it entailed depended on the class of the women a given samurai wanted to wed. Today we're going to focus on what happened when women from the lower classes wanted to get themselves some of that sweet samurai loving though, because it's hilarious. In short, common women wanting to marry samurai had to pay them for the privilege of becoming what amounted to a servant. That last part isn't hyperbole either. It's noted that one of the most valuable traits in samurai wives was obedience, and that they were basically expected to do everything for their husband, including making themselves available for sex 24-7. Bro, they got women. <laughs> Samurais are some pimps. They some gangster, they some gangbanging ass pimps. That's all a samurai is, is a gangbanging ass pimp. He gets a new toolie, he gets a new toolie, just using it anywhere he want to, whenever he want, just get a toolie and just use it. Now he got, he got the women paying him money, pimp, getting paid money to be with him. That's wild. Samurai is different, bro. These motherfuckers are different. These motherfuckers are gangster pimps, pimp gangsters. Wow. Number 6. Wives were expected to kill themselves if their husband messed up. Seppuku for the lucky few of you who've managed to make whoa, kill themselves whoa, whoa, whoa. available for sex 24-7. Number 6. Wives were expected to kill themselves if their husband messed up. Seppuku for the lucky Nigga. <laughs> so he count the money wrong. Being the pimp, he count the money wrong. And mess up and shit. So now she gotta kill herself for him fucking up the money. He didn't sharpen the sword right, fucked up on the little performance and shit. She gotta kill herself. That's different, bro. I don't know. This one is different. Wow. Lucky few of you who've managed to make it this far on the internet without running into those people who are oddly obsessed with Japan was a form of ritual suicide practiced by samurai when they really messed up. Usually, it was done as a way to rob an enemy of the satisfaction of killing them. To commit seppuku. Oh. Okay. Is that where the idea of like, like destroying your like your honor, or something? You gotta like kill yourself, kind of. I don't know. I might sound really ignorant saying that, but it's like I've heard things like you know, like destroyed like your family's honor, and you gotta like hurt yourself for self-punishment to an extent. A samurai would slice open his own stomach with a small blade before his head was ceremoniously cut off by a trusted associate. But here's where things oh get, God. well, weird. You see, when a samurai screwed up so badly that he felt he needed to commit seppuku to die with at least a shred of honor intact, his wife was expected to kill herself too. Number 5. Bushido and how it killed thousands during World War II Bushido is generally described as being a strict code followed by samurai that stressed the importance of honor and self-sacrifice. In reality, though, Bushido was more of a nebulous group of rules that samurai kind of followed when they felt like it. This didn't stop the Japanese government reviving the idea of Bushido during World War II as a way of convincing conscripts to die in the most explodey, screw-you way possible. While it's not necessarily the fault of samurai that years later the government would use them as a shiny example of why sometimes killing yourself could be awesome if you did it in a metal enough way, it is their fault for being so cool everyone was all like, yeah, I'll crash a plane into a battleship if it's what a samurai would have done. Number 4. They used to shoot dogs with arrows for sport. Though samurai are synonymous with the katana, samurai placed a great deal of emphasis in learning how to properly use a bow, so much so that they trained by chasing dogs on horseback and shooting them with arrows. Over time, the exercise became popular enough that, that samurai like a sport. and Japanese nobles began doing it for fun, it like a competing medieval against sport. one another to see who- I mean, you, gotta, you can't be too surprised at this, bro. I mean, the fucking Colosseum, they'd have motherfucking slaves and shit and fucking people who got caught up and were in jail or whatever did something wrong they just had them fucking running around fucking damn near uh about to get eaten by lions and bears and all types of other weird shit so it's like they have thousands of people there cheering that shit on trap doors and shit so hey this ain't that crazy to be honest who could preemptively annoy peter the most 
Just so this entry isn't totally depressing, we should mention that the arrows used were sometimes padded so that the dog wasn't killed, but this was less out of concern for the dog's well-being, and more so that Keeping the those arrows. shooting at them didn't have to go out and buy more yep. if they were really good at it. Mm -hmm. Number 3. They used to have lots of sex with teenage boys. It may surprise you to learn that becoming a samurai involved having a surprising amount of sex with an old creepy man. To explain, samurai training young boys in the ways of combat were allowed to take their apprentice as a lover until they became an adult as part of a brotherhood contract. Though it's noted that the samurai could only do this with the boy's express permission, anyone with a basic understanding of how consent works should be able to see how gross this is. Number two, they refuse. That is. That is what it is, man. Wow. Uh, not trying to be, I would be cool. I would not try to be no samurai. <laughs> uh, that's what I gotta do? I was like, hey, that's not cool. That's all right. That's not too bad. That? that mm -mm. We ain't about to do that, bro. That's what we, that's what we not about to do, bro. I'm cool with killing people. I can kill anybody I want, whatever. I get a little sore and shit. I do all I ain't about to, mm -mm to reintegrate into society because they felt they were above working. The idea of ronin, masterless samurai who become wandering swords for hire, has become almost as romanticized as the idea of the samurai I mean, what you expect them? You expect them to think you just told them that they could literally do anything they want. Basically told them you're a fucking demigod, you can do whatever the fuck you want, basically, and whatever the fuck, you can do anything you want. You can kill anybody. You can sh do whatever, really. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing to you. You just can't mess up. Come on, you expect him to go to work. <laughs> I was like, do you expect him to go to work after that? Come on, bro. Hell no, I'm a samurai. I'm gonna kill everybody in this job if I get mad. And as such, we felt like we should call them out for being awful people too. In short, if a samurai lost his master or otherwise dishonored himself, he'd become a ronin, which was roughly analogous with being a hobo. Despite mm. being considered one of the lowest rungs of society, ronin still mostly acted like samurai, in that okay. they treated okay. everyone like crap and refused to work like normal people, considering it to be beneath them. Due to this, many ronin became bodyguards, mercenaries, and criminals, and earned their keep killing or robbing people for money. Number 1. The Kabukimono like Ronin, Kabukimono. So, is that like Raiden? So he's like Raiden from. Because they said Ronin. So he's like Raiden from uh, Mortal Kombat. So is Raiden uh, uh, Ronin? Yeah, bro, that's literally the same thing. That's literally Raiden, bro. Wow. So Raiden was a samurai who got exiled for wrongdoings in and he can has electricity okay robbing people makes for sense, money makes sense. number one the kabukimono like ronin kabukimono were often masterless samurai who decided that being alive was a preferable alternative to letting someone cut their head off with a big sword unlike ronin though they celebrated their new lease on life by being utterly fabulous the kabukimono would dress in wildly flamboyant outfits in the most garish colors possible when such an outfit couldn't be found, the kabukimono would settle for women's clothing. Kabukimono, a samurai with no masters and thus no responsibilities, spends most of their time actively making the world a worse place, engaging in activities that would make Master Betty proud, like beating random people in the street or oh, fleeing wow. from restaurants without paying. So really, Just a you nuisance. Like that video, if you did, please the give us a like. is, from restaurants without the paying. The kabukimono's is nuisance so really out here, man. So that was, man, that was it. That was kind of crazy, bro. That was a little different, bro. That was a little different, man. But that was uh, Top 10 Horrifying Facts You Didn't Know About the Samurai, man. Hopefully, y'all liked it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Like I said, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace!